to go. I know everybody is tired and everything. That's the third segment is now and then. So we're going to go. We're starting off segment three of the interview. The name of the third book is Now and Then. So I think this part of the interview more than any should focus on issues in the now and then. Mm -hmm. Now and in the not too far future. Mm -hmm. So um, first of all, I just wanted to ask for your take on the current state of Nigeria and the performance of the current administration. Do you think we're on the right path? Well, you, you see, the good thing about democracy, as I, as I said earlier on, is that um, you, you can always be on the right path, uh, except, of course, you do not allow democracy to work as it should work. Um, because I think you are not going to be an oracle today to say that things are not what they should be. Mm. Um, okay, if things are not what they should be, that's, that's not uh, a big deal. Then in democratic system, then you try and bring things to be what they should be. And that is the beauty of democracy. Uh, and if that fails, periodically you have an election to determine whether the party in power should continue or the party in power should be changed. Mm. Okay. Again, beauty of democracy. And I believe that these are the intrinsic beauties of democracy that we must not allow to be destroyed. Mm. So the current administration, in your opinion, are they doing well? Do you think they deserve another chance to do further, to go further? My dear brother, if I can refer you to my statement of 23rd of January, <laughs> okay, we'll take, I've said all that I need We'll take your word for that. Yes. Um, I want to ask is, do you think your watch is over? What do you think your contribution will be going forward? In what capacity? My, 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 my watch can never be over. If you read the introduction to mm -hmm. uh, my watch, I made it clear that, that by virtue of the position I've held in this country, it doesn't matter what anybody may say. I owe it as a duty. Having been honored by God to be uh, a leader in this country, I can, I, it would be irresponsible of me to then say, well, uh, I either I'm tired or Nigeria can go to places. No. Mm. That will not be right. So, um, I should be able to say, yes, my watch, what is it now? What does it consist of? To raise alarm to alert people, to point out. And that, I believe, is what a, a watchman's duty is. Mm. You raise alarm when you see danger. To call attention to things that are unusual. To make people not to be complacent with evil. That's what I believe my uh, watch should remain mm. to be. I think it's very important that someone like you that has held that position, like you said, is a responsibility that you use the platform or the position that you have reached to always raise alarm. And it's something that people pay attention to. I mean, when you put out the letter earlier in the year regarding this current, I mean, something people take note of it and it gets people thinking, it gets people and discussing. It, and there's nothing personal about it. Mm -hmm. I look, I, I always the interest say, of Nigeria then. I said, that there's nothing personal. I, I know Buhari very well. And um, when uh, those boys who brought him into uh, government after a coup came to see me, they came to see me in my farm, and I said, it, I put it in my book. He came to see me in my farm and I said, hey, in my part of the world, when once you have said good night at a place, <laughs> you don't go there again and say good evening. I have said good night to government. Now, so, and they said, look, 
the same things are bad. I said, all right, go to this or this if you if that's the way you feel. And uh, they decided to do what they think what was best. They want to do. Oh. And so Buhari benefited from that. Buhari was a beneficiary of that. And if Buhari has not been a military head of state, he could not have been a president. So, so um, you got a PhD recently. Uh, um, I, I think many people would consider it's a great achievement. I think many people would ask at your level, your, what you've achieved is not necessarily needed. Um, can I ask? How, what it has changed for you. I don't, I don't feel I need to ask the reasons behind it because as you can see, I feel you're someone that's thirsty for knowledge and is always trying to improve himself. So I just want to ask, since you got it, how has it changed things for you? How are you applying I it? think I know, I know God a little bit more. Um, the um, area I, I researched into is the area of liberation theology. Um, two things I found out in, in doing my research uh, well, of course, liberation theology was thought to be purely a Christian issue. But uh, in my research, I found that there's an element of liberation theology in Islam. And there's also an element of liberation theology in our culture. Mm. Now, our way of life does not preach that you should eat and let and let others not to eat mm. I look at the culture of about 30 tribes in Nigeria and all of them have a place to say yes you look after less privileged people which is what liberation theology is all about but you must think of the other person. You must look at the other person. Now you must realize that, yes, when you are preaching for this save, uh, to save a man's soul, what of his body, what of his needs, his physical needs must not be ignored. Yes, we know that eventually we are all going to be there in heaven. Yes. yes. But before we get to heaven, what do we do? That's what liberation theology is all about. And I found that very interesting. Interesting that, yes, Jesus Christ himself, who is the author of liberation theology, said, when I was in prison, he paid me a visit. When I was hungry, you fed me. Islam has something similar to that. Oh. Our culture also has something similar to that. You see? And that is what liberation theology is about. Oh. So if you say what has changed or what have I learned, I've learned that, yes, in Christianity, even in Hinduism, because I did a little bit of comparison uh, with Buddhism and Hinduism, but mainly with Christianity, Islam, and uh, our culture. Oh. That's very interesting. You mentioned that you don't like being called a doctor. Well, because, uh, my dear brother, um, uh, yes, uh, I think I'm losing this game. Why don't no, you, you have know? lost it already. <laughs> I think you have lost it already. Go, 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 go. I have nothing left over. <laughs> I literally have one piece left. Um, remove this one to safety. Um, 
Um, I think we're coming to the end of the interview. I think I would advise any youth or just anybody who has the time to read these books. I think there's a lot to learn from someone who knows the in and outs of Nigerian politics from beginning to end. There's so much to learn from these books about life in general, about politics, about leadership, about religion. And I would advise anybody else to check out those series of books. The name of the books are My Watch. There are three books. I would advise anybody to read them. Um, before we, we go, I would say... What do you what what's your vision for Nigeria and um, do you have oh, no. any parting words for Oh well, yeah I, I, I see a great a great future. We God has endowed us with all that we need. God has been very, very kind to this country. Our problem is leadership. And people will say, Well, look, I I, I don't say uh, I believe we will get there. Uh, leadership don't flock. Anybody must know that. But if we continue to go on the basis of democracy, we will hit it right sooner than later. Is there anything you want to tell Nigerians before we round up the interview? Yeah, well, Nigerians don't feel discouraged. We have nothing better than democracy. It's work elsewhere. And here, is even working. What we must all ensure is that our democracy is neither destroyed nor derailed. If we allow things that are undemocratic to continue to happen to our democracy, it will soon be a thing of the past. A thing of the past. We mustn't allow that. Democracy is all that we have to hold this country together, to have good governance, to ensure that we have performance, to ensure that the ills of the society are removed by those who are in government. And if they fail, then the alternative is simple. They must be chopped out and we try another one. And if that one fails too, the alternative is simple. Until we get people who can perform. Out of 200 million people, there should can be no be only one person or only one group that can give us what we need. That is what Nigerians must hold on to. And particularly youth. Youth. If you have an old tired group that cannot deliver, let us gently push them aside and get young people. Look, we have Macron at the age of 39. Oh. And he faces uh, uh, Trump. He works with Merkel. And I ask why must we be going for tired old people who have nothing? Now you are using that. You are digital. Some of these people are not even analog. They are, they are paper log. Huh? They are not analog. You are digital. How can you use paper log to run the affairs of, the, of your country in a, in a time of digital oh. Oh. thank you very much no problem, uh, thank well you. let us lay the thing and uh, <laughs> you, you, you should know where you are because um, uh, you are telling me that you used to play with your father i tried uh, i tried yeah. but you see yeah there you are really, i definitely lost this game yeah, that, 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 but um, you lost gallantly <laughs> <laughs> thank you very much sir there you have it, guys. Thank you very much for honoring us with this interview, President Olushagun Obasanjo, for you. And we're out. The first name that we're going to start with is Saraki. Uh, it's uh, Senate President. Buari. Uh, current President of Nigeria. Um, Professor Oshimbajo. Oshimbajo, current Vice President of Nigeria. Um, Atiku. Atiku, former Vice President. And now an aspirant. <laughs> Quan Quan, sir.
Konkosu senator and now an aspirant. Um, Tambuwal? Tambuwal, now a governor, former speaker of the House of Representatives, and now an aspirant. Um, Ambody? Ambody, uh, as of today, I don't know what has become his fate, but uh, whatever it is, I believe he will run his term as governor of Lagos uh, to complete his first term. And finally, the last name we have for you is Tinubu. Uh, Bola. Bola is supposed to be the leader of APC. I don't know what is the position of his leadership as you and I are talking. Okay.